it's six o'clock. We'll go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, if anybody would like a card, uh, cards are there. Uh, if you would, please rise uh, for an invocation. If you would, pray, pray with me. Father, thank you for this day, and we, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together. Father, we just pray that you're here, uh, that you give us wisdom, and Father, we also ask that you be with our first responders uh, as they're out doing their job. Father, keep them safe, and Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This time we will have uh, Boy Scout Troop 1908 present the colors. <coughs> Audience attention, color guard attention, color guard advance. Color guard halt. Color guard prepare to post the colors. <coughs> color guard post the colors. And join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Return to post. That was a bad idea. Thank you. Color guard halt. Audience at ease. Scouts at ease. If you would go ahead and be seated. If I could have our Boy Scouts back up, I'd just like to introduce them real quick. You'd raise your hand when I say your name. Noah Stewart, Russell, Aiden, Ethan, Gage. Thank you very much uh, for coming here and spending your time. I know school's about out, so enjoy your summer and thank you again. Renee Earls, come up, please. And are you representing her? Um, I think Debbie Lee as well. So <coughs> we're. Come on out. <coughs> Let's go ahead and announce them, and then we will sure. uh, do the proclamation. And um, with the end of school, it is customary that the students at each high school uh, in each grade they are honored for the most hours through the Texas Scholar Program. This is a program that uh, was started with the Odessa Chamber of Commerce in partnership with ECISD and Richard Milburn School that was added recently. Texas Scholars is a program that promotes volunteerism. They start in the ninth grade and they accumulate hours for volunteering with the hopes that by the time they graduate as a senior they have volunteered at minimum 50 hours. They receive a cord for graduation, uh, and this really instills the importance of volunteerism as students. Hopefully, as they grow as adults, they will continue their volunteerism. Even though 50 hours is the minimum, you will see that we have far more than that. So tonight, we will recognize the students from the various schools, and if they would come forward. From New Tech Odessa, we have in the ninth grade, Alexis Malone with 40 hours. They start with five hours a year, so she's well on her way. For the 10th grade, Haley Zunt with 180 hours. Also at New Tech, uh, as the 11th grader, Justin Leitz with 117 hours. He's not with 
this tonight, he's probably getting more hours at volunteering. <laughs> and as a senior, uh, Froland Dominique Katsiamko with 202 hours. <laughs> and then also a senior with the most cumulative hours through the entire 9th through 12th grade, Ruby Ramirez with 345 hours. Then we have Odessa High School for ninth grade, Daniela Garcia with 44 hours. Also for 10th grade, Natalie Benavides with 238 hours. Eleventh grade, Caitlin Welch with 188 hours. And then the senior at Odessa High School, not only with the most hours this year at 728, but also a cumulative of 919 hours, Eric Aranda. So for Permian ninth grade, Rosemary Lachica with 229 hours. That's a first year Junior, uh, first year. For Permian 10th grade, Marianne Rajput at 208 hours. <laughs> 11th grade, Megan Freeman, 217 hours. Permian with not only the most hours for this year at 342, but also cumulative hours of 1,002, Alyssa Bloom. Wow. For Falcon Early College High School, 9th and 10th graders, for the 9th grader, Jalen Mendoza with 20 hours. with 339 hours, Haley Laverne. <laughs> Odessa College Tech School for the ninth grade, Sophia Rutledge at 86 hours. <laughs> and the 10th grader, Michaela Welch at 496 hours. <laughs> is amazing. And then our last school, Richard Milburn Academy, uh, this year uh, for 145 hours was Blair Jones with a cumulative hour of 759. So since the uh, start of Texas Scholars back in 1997, these students have given over 260,000 volunteer hours. If you put a price tag on that, I can't do the math. Um, but this year alone, just for this school year, we had 540 students who gave over 18,000 hours. So our future leaders of hopefully staying in Odessa. <laughs> Could you please raise your hand and be recognized as well? <laughs> Thank you for encouraging volunteerism in Odessa. Oftentimes, um, it's the student who starts volunteering and goes home and reminds the parent how important it is to volunteer. So it's wonderful to know that our future uh, is in the hands of these wonderful students who have already given so much of their time. So congratulations. I saw you start to do it. Uh, thank you all very much for caring enough about your community to give back. You are an example uh, for so many of us, including myself, that you do have the time to give back. And I just want to thank you on behalf of the council and all the citizens uh, for your time. Thank you for making Odessa a better place. To your parents, great job. 
Um, I know the kids are a reflection of their parents, and I commend you for your hard work. Because I know sometimes when you start it, as with our kids, it's like you've got to go do this, go get out there and do it. So thank you for reminding them, and thank you for setting the example. I've got a proclamation I want to give you all. Uh, it's a City of Odessa proclamation. Whereas the Texas Scholar Program is designed to encourage students to pursue a higher level of course study to be qualified when entering the workforce. The Erie County Independent School District participates in this workforce development program, which helps students understand the good, well-paying jobs that are awarded to those who have prepared themselves by obtaining a sound academic education. And the students in this prog program volunteer for local nonprofit, religious, and charitable organizations. And volunteering helps teamwork and communication skills, builds networking opportunities, and provides a sense of achievement. And the Odessa Chamber of Commerce, ECISD, businesses, organizational sponsors, <coughs> Texas scholars, for our leaders of tomorrow. Now, therefore, I, David R. Turner, by the virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Odessa, do hereby proclaim May 23rd, 2007, Texas Scholars Day. Congratulations and thank you very much. Okay, next we uh, move to citizen comments on non-agenda item. Uh, each speaker will be given three minutes. Uh, we'll start in the order um, that I was given the cards in. So Raymond Armendariz, if you would please come forward. Okay. Hello. My name is Ramon Armendariz. And, uh, I'll read this off, so it's only got three minutes. I was born and raised here in Odessa, South Side, 617 West Theta. Graduated from Metro High School, West Texas State University, United States Marine Corps combat veteran, retired major in United States, retired major in United States Marine Corps. At the start of the meeting, you had a, a prayer and a pledge, a, a pledge of allegiance, and I saw everybody put their hand on your, in your heart. But you know what, uh, to me, some of you people there in the council uh, obviously don't, it doesn't mean anything to you because that hand, that same hand that you have is, is like a greedy hand. You're reaching inside the pocket of the taxpayer and then you're, you're spending like a drunken sailor. And then on so many things, not good for everybody in Odessa, just for a select few. You're wasting money on these Mexican junkets that you go, if you want to go to Mexico, go on your own. And nothing's ever happened to that, you know. I know that, you know that, they know that. It's only beneficial to a few, not to everybody. <clears throat> then you fired a man from the old DC just because he, uh, he was holding you accountable, uh, asking a question about where the money's going. He fired him. I'll tell you what, as a Marine Corps officer, I was accountable all the time. Over 200 Marines at one time, 250 Marines. I, I was accountable for what they did and what they didn't do, whether it was good or bad. Just like the mayor, you're accountable for the city council. You're supposed to be a leader. Lead them in the direction that you want them to go. And uh, also you were entrusted with the authority and the taxpayer money to benefit all Odessans, north side, east side, south side, west side, everybody. There is a south Odessa, in case you didn't know that. There is a south Odessa that needs improvement at uh, industry and uh, basically the goal. It's not a, th a three-sided Odessa. <clears throat> it needs to benefit all of You know, I'm really concerned about this because I'm concerned about my country. I'm concerned about my hometown. This is my hometown. That's what makes me mad about this. And then, uh, then you get this volunteer, uh, supposedly, that wants to volunteer for 150000 to be a, a volunteer for the old, some program you're gonna have, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Raymond Chavez. I mean, why not hire an OC graduate or UTPB graduate for that job? Probably a lot less. 
a volunteer, to me a volunteer, I volunteered when I went to the Marine Corps. I wasn't offered 150000 I volunteered because I wanted to do my duty to my God, to my country. I don't need somebody to pay me to volunteer. And if you look up what volunteer means, it means without pay. I have a lot more to say, but three I'll say that for the next three minutes, the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Armander. Sure. Uh, next is uh, Larry. Uh, <laughs> next is Larry Melton. Mayor Melton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council members. You're sitting where you are tonight for one reason and one reason only, because the citizens you represent selected you to be their spokesman in the governing of the city of Odessa. In that regard, and in my opinion, these same citizens expect each of you to be professional, transparent, and to act with integrity in your governance. And although each of you represents a specific area, your ultimate goal should be the betterment of the entire city of Odessa. Again, in my opinion, what our community has been witness to recently has not been the level of professionalism that we have grown to expect from our elected officials. We have seen what appears to be a collusion between council members, questionable uses of the executive sessions, and a lack of transparency in some of your actions. While you have had the legal right to take the actions you have, you also may have violated the legal rights of volunteers who have faithfully and in good conscience given of their time and talents for the betterment of the city of Odessa. I would encourage each of you to rethink the recent actions of the council and going forward do so with integrity and professionalism. In my opinion, each of you should be your own person and not be swayed by the thoughts and the actions and especially pressures from another council member. I challenge each of you to stand up for what you really believe Speak to let your thoughts become known and govern our city with a vision of making it a better place for each of us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is David Butan. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I've got a list of credentials here that tell you I'm qualified to talk about the three things I want to talk about, but they don't match up with Mr. Armandares. I've been a member of the Odessa business community as an owner, operator, and executive since 1975. I've been involved in the Odessa Chamber of Commerce as a member and a volunteer serving on committees and boards since 1975 as well. I was the chamber chairman in 2007 and 8. I was elected to the Ector County Hospital District Board and served in that capacity from 1996 to 2000. I served as a volunteer on the City of Odessa Economic Advisory Council before the Odessa Development Corporation was formed and when the city's economic development annual budget was only $300,000. I served as a volunteer on the Odessa, ODC's uh, Compliance Committee completing my service as its chairman. I have provided volunteer service to numerous other nonprofit, charitable, and civic organizations in Odessa over the past 40 plus years. And I currently serve as a volunteer on nine boards and committees in our, com in our community. Again, why have I gone through this list of activities? I offer this information only to demonstrate my qualifications to address three important issues as they relate to the Odessa City Council and in turn to make three simple requests. First, I respectfully request that you convey to the Odessa Development Corporation Board and its economic development contractor, the, the Odessa Chamber of Commerce, a clear, unified message to adhere to the original mission of ODC 
a mission solely dedicated to the creation and maintenance of industrial and manufacturing jobs, and the creation of industrial and manufacturing capital investment. Second, I respectfully request that you manage the city's dedicated, unpaid volunteers in the most professional way possible, and that you treat each and every one of them in a way that each of you would expect to be treated. Finally, I respectfully request that you make every effort to conduct City of Odessa business in the most public way possible by not only refraining from finding reasons for private meetings, but also by seeking to meet in public even in the instances where private meetings would be legitimate. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. Next is Drew Crutcher. Thank you, Mayor, and members of the council. My name is Drew Crutcher. I moved to Odessa in 1975. I was a founder of an engineering business in Odessa in 1979. I have worn many hats related to economic development in Odessa, I retired and I chose to remain in Odessa. Today I'm speaking as a private citizen that wants to see his hometown prosper and grow. I want my children and grandchildren to have an opportunity to find a job in Odessa. Maybe they wish to live somewhere else, but I want them to have an opportunity to work and live in Odessa. That doesn't happen without working at it. You must gather resources, create the right environment, Create the jobs, and the town can have good parks, good schools, good roads, and good neighborhoods. These, in turn, create good retail. This can't be done by any one person or even one group of people. The best cities have everyone pulling together to build a unified vision. We must paint with broad, bold strokes we can't leave mom and pop operations behind, but attracting larger companies or growing and expanding local ones with many jobs gives mom and pop companies and our city the most opportunities for the future. I'm worried that our city council is thinking small and non-inclusive. I am concerned that you don't agree that you were elected to represent, not dictate to our citizens. I urge you to enlarge your vision. Give my grandkids a reason to join me and make Odessa their hometown also. Thank you. Next speaker is Thomas Blackstone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. I'm not as good a speaker as the last three guys, so there's not going to be a lot said here, but, uh, you know, I'm a numbers guy. I work at Lone Star State Bank. I've been on uh, Chamber Board. I've been on the ODC Compliance Committee. I've been on OIDC Board. I look at numbers. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you what, what y'all put together, what City Council put together years ago to make economic development work in Odessa. When I came here in 88, all the banks changed names. Most of them went broke, savings and loans went broke. Odessa was looking for a way to make the economy grow, diversify from oil and gas, and expand oil and gas better than, than it had been. So we, we put together the tax base, we, we formed ODC, we set up a board, we set up a compliance committee, we did all this stuff, and it's really worked. Since 1999, we've incentivized at least 46 companies to either expand or to come to Odessa. In that length of time, it's almost 20 years, we, y'all, tax base, has paid $29 million for these companies to come in and bring jobs and to bring tax base, okay? $29 million, sounds like a lot of money, but it's been over almost 20 years, okay? When we started incentivizing these companies, depending on what year we started, each one of these companies' tax base here, they added up to $107 million. 
is what we were getting from these companies before we gave them any money, the ones that we've expanded, okay? Since that time, that tax base has gone to $926 million a year. The valuation on that property that we incentivized with $29 million, okay? So I did a little math because I like numbers. Uh, if you take our overall tax base rate, then this last year, 2016, we increased the tax base, that's for all the tax entities, not just the city, but y'all have to share, $18 million, $18,656,000 in one year. So we've almost recuperated in one year our tax base increase of what we spent over 20. So all I'm asking y'all to do is let's don't fix something that's not broke. Let's keep using ODC the way we've been using it. It works well. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mike George. Mr. Mayor, council members. The recent removal of Jimmy Bro as a dedicated volunteer for, as his role as chairman of ODC without any indication of the reason is unprecedented in the 18 years of ODC. His removal was rude and clearly points to a, abuse of power. The council did it because they had the power to and legally could. And it is even more rude that the council does not have the backbone to tell the voters of Odessa the reason for his removal. A recent Odessa American editorial indicated that there is a movement being discussed down at City Hall and purposely out of the public's earshot to bring economic development under the city of Odessa. Why would some of you council members want to do that? Well, the answer is obvious. You want to control the money. A grab of power. This should not happen. And if it does, the citizen of Odessa will not enjoy the 38% return on their investment, as the Perryman Report says that we've had. Why? Because volunteers uh, are not n nearly inclined to volunteer for a taxing entity. I know firsthand what it takes to sustain a successful economic development program. I know the number of hours it takes, the level of cooperation required from all of our taxing entities, and the large number of volunteer hours that it takes to have a successful economic development program. And it cannot be done by employees of the city of Odessa who are working eight to five, and it cannot be done by bureaucrats. Mr. Jimmy Bro, the ODC chairman, removed from his volunteer position before his term expires, has been a tremendous volunteer for many years. He is as knowledgeable about economic development and what it takes to be successful in economic development as anyone in Odessa. He has been on the ODC board for several years and he's been a very good steward of the citizens 4A tax money. Numerous times he has attempted to find credibility in the Hispanic Chamber's Mexico initiative and accountability, but to no avail. Year after year, the Hispanic Chamber was given a warning that this would be their last time to get ODC funding if at the end of the year they didn't have at least one economic development project. Since the economic development budget hearing before the ODC is coming up, Three minutes are up, I suspect Jimmy Bro was removed because he was surely to ask that hard question. <laughs> Can you point to any economic success in Odessa? It would truly be pathetic to think that Jimmy was removed because he was demanding accountability of the hundreds of thousand dollars spent on the Mexico initiative. That's three minutes. Thanks for Thank the you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next speaker is uh, Larry Crutcher. Mayor, council members. My name is Larry Crutcher. I'm a resident of Odessa for 35 years. Been in business here for 35 years. I presently am blessed to be serving on the board of directors of your chamber. <clears throat> and I have to say that I'm terribly disappointed in this council by their inaction to take action on the Weir Company. That project took our paid professional economic development people some 12 to 15 months to rope in. Those companies, and there's a network of site selectors, and by not taking action on what had already been approved by several committees and letting this project die, we stand to have lost 40 jobs of our presently employed people, plus the loss of 84 jobs that was to be coming. But bigger than that, these site selectors talk one to another. It's a small network, US-wide. And we have sent out the message that Odessa really doesn't care how much money you spend to getting a site ready to get a measly amount of tax abatements and incentives to come here. And by our inaction, we said we don't really care what you guys do. And we're trying to grow a city with good jobs for all, all of you. Every section, north section, east section, west section, and the south side. And we have just told the nation we don't really want growth in this city. And guys, just because we have oil here, don't be deceived. They don't have to come to Odessa. Houston, Texas has people striving hard. Reno, Oklahoma made a very good package and will probably be the home of Weir. We can't just say, well, we've got oil, they will come. Thank you so much. Next is Melanie Holman. <clears throat> I'm here in my capacity as the chairman of the ODC Compliance Committee to offer clarification of the Compliance Committee process and to extend an offer to answer any questions council members may have regarding our process. The Compliance Committee is made up of respected professionals including banking professionals, CPAs, attorneys, and area business people. Upon receipt of an eligible application, the Economic Development Department of the Odessa Chamber of Commerce provides the Compliance Committee relevant information, including the applicant's financial statements, along with the grant ranges calculated by the City Council approved grant matrix and impact summaries, estimating rates of return to review and discuss. A project that reaches the City Council for consideration has been thoroughly vetted, not only by the Economic Development Team, but also by the professionals on the Compliance Committee and approved by the ODC Board. ODC and the Compliance Committee also oversee and report on annual audits that ensure the grant recipients comply with their Economic Development Agreements which define the obligations of the grant recipients. Grants are paid in arrears over five-year terms, and a recipient does not receive payment for a given year until full compliance is proven for both job creation and the capital investment. The Compliance Committee only presents the best grant applicants to ODC and by extension to the City Council. We endeavor to bring projects we believe would diversify the economy. However, we also see great value in following the guidance provided in the City Council Commissioned 2017 Paramin Report that we should play the area's strengths and consider applications made by strong energy companies that would add jobs, expand the tax base, and generate a ripple effect on our economy by creating more work for area existing energy service companies. 
The Compliance Committee takes seriously our obligation to ensure that taxpayer money voters designated for economic development is granted responsibly to companies we believe will be good corporate citizens and that through the review of applicants by the qualified professionals on the Compliance Committee along with our audit process and the structure of our contracts there's virtually no risk of loss of taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Next is uh, Richard Sittles. Thank you, Mayor, City Council. I'm using this high tech stuff so far. <laughs> I come uh, before you to speak on two subjects and I re regret that I have to be very blunt because I don't have much time. First is the uh, removal of the ODC chairman, Jimmy Bro. I think that was very unprofessional in the way it was handled. And I do not like the uh, way it was done. The uh, no reasons were given in the beginning. No reasons have been given since. And my point I'm making here is that I think the council will find it very difficult to recruit volunteers in the future, good volunteers to serve on all the boards and commissions that the city council is responsible for if they're faced with issues like this. The second is I'm president of Civils Incorporated, heavy industry manufacturing company. Industry brings money to town. Everybody else just moves it around and enjoys it. But the outside money comes from industry. We're, my company has been in business, my family has been in the business for 117 years. We've been in Odessa since 1947 with our base of operations. I'm the third generation, the fourth generation, my son and daughter work for me, the fifth generation is going to college, I hope I can recruit them in the future. But since industry brings the money to town, everybody else enjoys it, retail, service, <coughs> sectors, schools, cities, everything else that receives money through the property taxes, or through wages that these industries pay their employees makes what the city grow. I'm very disappointed that the council turned down the incentive package for wear oil and gas because oil and gas is our business right now. We could diversify, we've tried, and we may in the future to other industries, but those industries are the lifeblood of any community. The money comes in, everybody else gets to use it, enjoy it, make the city grow. If we don't have economic incentive packages for industry wanting to come, we lose. Thank you. Uh, last speaker we have, unless there's any cards that I've seen, uh, is Jimmy Brown. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I have a lot of notes, <coughs> but um, after hearing Dick speak, I'll amend my notes. He represents a family business of 117 years. I represent one of 53. Tomorrow I have a meeting with a customer from Canada. We're discussing a project in Canada, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. There are issues that you have before the uh, chamber, I mean the council. Uh, you folks really need to work on your communication skills. You don't have a written direction for the ODC. You don't have a written direction for yourself. 
as I suspect, well, several questions. You have uh, a trash truck that was bought recently in the past year. I hear it's still not operational. Hell, people, get it to work. Regarding this Mexico initiative, I continually hear from Raymond Chavez that this is a super large deal. Bravo. The companies in Mexico are Fortune 500 companies, or thereabout. So I did a little research. If you're number one, that would be Walmart last year that had profits of $482 billion. Number 500 was a company by the name of Burlington at profit of $151 million. My point is, any business in Mexico that wants to do business in Odessa, Texas, has the financial wherewith and the capacity to go to Odessa and figure it out how to do it. They do not need someone as Raymond Chavez. Raymond is not qualified for the position. And you people will be fools to pay Raymond Chavez $150,000 for doing what? Entertaining? As Mr. Civil said, it takes industry for this city to exist. And you're going to, you've lost the Weir project. And everybody in the economic development department did work their cans off. I was part of some of the luncheons when we talked to these people. They were very up for the deal. They were going to utilize Odessa College to do training for their personnel. Odessa College was talking to me as I represented the ODC. Three minutes are up. And they were going to utilize Odessa, Odessa College. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't see any more cards. So that concludes the citizen comment agenda. We move to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do a second? Second. Have a motion, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Next, we'll open uh, other council actions. We'll open a public hearing. Open a public hearing to consider the approval of the request from Texas Tech University, uh, the owner, to rezone from single family three to the medical center. Mr. Brennan. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. City Council approved this request on the first reading back on May the 9th of this year. The property involved in this request is located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Bernice Avenue and 3rd Street. The site is currently zoned single family three and it is vacant. Uh, land use in the area does consist of residential development, industrial related development, and medical facility uh, related uses. The applicant and the property owner in this case is Texas Tech University System. And the purpose of the zone change from single family three to medical center would facilitate the development of an additional parking area uh, that would be related to the Texas Tech University Health Science Center's new academic facility that's being developed on adjacent properties. Um, Texas Tech did give a brief presentation to the council at the last meeting and I believe that uh, this facility will be welcome and it will be quite impressive. Um, the area is located in the greater downtown district of the city's future land use uh, map. It is considered one of the prime areas for retail, commercial, and educational development. Uh, the future land use map does call for commercial development adjacent to major streets and recognizes the unique situation of this area with two major hospitals and a medical teaching facility in this area. The proposed zoning is consistent with uh, the comprehensive master plan and the city's priority for attractive, safe neighborhoods and providing a non-intrusive parking area would meet the educational facility's needs. 
Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did give unanimous approval to this request, and the planning staff does concur with this recommendation for approval. And be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from council? We have a representative from Tech. Uh, yes, sir. No. Before we start the, <coughs> the uh, citizen input, is there anything you'd like to comment on? No. Okay. This is a public hearing, so at this time we will open up the floor for any public comment on this agenda item. If you would please come forward. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? So moved. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item two, open a public hearing to consider the approval of the request by Matthew M. Scott to rezone from office to retail. Mr. Brennan. Yes, sir. This item two was approved on first reading uh, back on May the 9th of this year. Uh, the property involved in the request is located in the 3200 block of Foggy Road. The site is currently zoned office. It is occupied by the eyewash laundry facility. And land use in the area does consist of single family residential and retail use development. Uh, the applicant and property owner in this case is Matthew M. Scott, and the purpose of the request to rezone uh, the property to retail would align the zoning of the property with the existing use that's located on this site. Uh, the proposed zoning for the area is consistent with the proposed land uses of uh, retail in the comprehensive plan, and this does identify retail as a recommended use along a major thoroughfare such as Foggy Road. The retail zoning requested for the site is not out of scale with the needs of this area and the city, and it will facilitate development of support services that would be uh, compatible with the existing residential development in this area. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did give unanimous approval to this request, and the planning staff does uh, concur with this recommendation for approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions related to this case. Any questions for council? <clears throat> what was it this done whenever they put that in out there I mean what is different now than, than whatever it was built well it's just the owner is uh, I believe it uh, has to do with insurance purposes also on his mic is also just to uh, get everything in alignment with the use is out there because the current use is our zoning is uh, office and what had happened back during the height of the uh, boom when everything was going really crazy a permit inadvertently got it uh, uh, issued for the laundry without uh, and it got past uh, the review process and we're just getting that in alignment so now. You're just, it's also all you're doing is cleaning up. We're cleaning not, up what happened. We're not there. changing anything that's no, sir. growing up there. I mean, no, I haven't sir. seen any difference in their business. There's not going to be anything different. We're cleaning it up and I think it has to do with his <coughs> getting everything in alignment with his personal business that he has to get done to it. We're just cleaning everything up. Very good. Any other questions from council? Also now he can bring other development in, right? He, once it meets all once the standards, yes ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. This is a public hearing, so at this time we will open up the floor for anyone that would like to comment on uh, this agenda item. If you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number three, we'll open the public hearing to consider the approval uh, requested by ICA Development as the owner to rezone from multifamily residents to retail district. Mr. Brennan. Yes, sir. This request also was approved by council on first reading back on May the 9th of this year. The property involved in this request is located southwest of the intersection of Dr. Emmett Headley Road and Mission Boulevard. This site is currently zoned multifamily one. It is vacant. Land use in the area does consist of vacant land. Uh, the applicant and the property owner in this case is ICA Development and the purpose of the zone change request to retail would facilitate retail development and related uses on this property. The area is located in the northeast part of the city of Odessa's future land use map. This area is considered one of the prime areas for retail and commercial development, and it would be backed by medium density residential growth in the city. Uh, the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan, and it is also consistent with the city's priority for attractive, safe, and context sensitive roadways that is taken into consideration for development. The Planning and Zoning Commission did give you unanimous approval of this request, and staff does concur with this recommendation. <coughs> and do have to ask any questions related to this request. Are there any questions? 
Okay, at this time we'll go we'll open up the floor um, for any public comment on this agenda item. If you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, we'll open a public hearing to consider the approval of the request by SJL Partners. Larry Lean is the owner for the original zoning of planned development. Mr. Brindley. Yes, sir. The city council did approve this request on first reading also back on May the 9th of this year. Uh, the property involved in the request is located at South Fodder Road at the city limit line. The site is designated future development. It is vacant. Land use in the area does consist of industrial related development and vacant land. Uh, the applicant is SJL Partners. They are the owner of the property and the purpose of the original zoning request would facilitate uh, industrial related development. It would also establish two drill sites and also establish a detention basin on this property. This subject area is located in the southern section of the city of Odessa's future land use map. This area is considered the heart of the industrial area for the city. Uh, the proposed zoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan <coughs> and is also consistent with the city's priority for safe roadways. Roadways, I'm sorry. Uh, say that real quick. Uh, Faudry functions as a major thoroughfare that does carry trucks quickly to the city's truck routes and out of the daily community traffic. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did give unanimous approval of this request with the following uh, conditions. Uh, development standards, which do include building height and setback, lot coverage, parking, things of this nature, would meet the development standards that stated in the light industrial zoning requirements uh, within the city. Land uses would include the uses that are allowed in the light industrial zoning district, with the exception of a sexually oriented business, and also curb and gutter would not be uh, required in this development. And the planning staff does concur with the commission's recommendation for approval and be happy to answer any questions related to this request. Are there any questions? What is it going to be used for? Uh, right now, it's just uh, going to be divided up into uh, about five or six uh, lots that are multi-acre in size. And uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Lee is at this time recruiting uh, companies to come down, purchase land, and facilitate industrial development. We don't have specific uses over yet. Fine. So will it come back to us when there's specific uses? Ah, uh, well, it'd go through the permitting process, and uh, it would have to meet all the conditions that the council does approve right now. Okay. And it would be the equivalent of what has been done in the uh, uh, previous 19 filings out in Lico. What, what about that drainage out there? Uh, the drainage has been addressed, and they are establishing, uh, you can see in the far southwest corner of the uh, PDLISD, that's the surface drainage area, and that would be a... Uh, uh, it would be adequate for this area and it would not cause any problems for this property or surrounding properties. Okay. So not, it's not something we're going to have to come back into and spend ten million dollars on a drainage? No sir, it's, it's been addressed. <coughs> Other questions? Okay, this is a public hearing so at this time we will open up the floor for anyone from the public that would like to come in on this agenda item. If you would please come forward. I have a comment. Sure, come on in. My name is Gino Sola. I'm the director of the Ector County Health Department, and I heard something about a sexually oriented business, and I wanted to clarify that that would not be established in this area. So that is understand? correct. That's the exception. It is not allowed. That's the area. question that I have, because we inspect those from the health department. So I was wondering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else that would like to comment? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? I abstain. We have four approvals and one abstention. Uh, the motion passes. Next, we move to ordinances. Consider an ordinance to lower the speed limit. Mr. Feldman. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request from TxDOT. Um, they have done a speed study out on uh, Highway 385 south of I-20, and what they're proposing to do is lower the speed limit. Right now, there's a section of 55, 
then it goes to 70 miles an hour in front of the law enforcement center, and then it's 75 miles an hour all the way to Crane County. What TxDOT wants to do is lower the speed limit to 55 miles per hour past the uh, law enforcement center, and then it'll be 70 miles an hour all the way to Crane County. And so uh, this uh, agenda item is to get our city ordinance in line with our roadway. So. Okay. Are there any questions? The speed limit is currently what right now? 70. Actually, there's a section of 55, 70 miles an hour in front of the jail, and then it goes to 75 all the way to the county line. And you want to move it to? It's 55, lower to 55 in front of the jail, and then 70 to the Crane <coughs> County line. Okay. What about from? The interstate to the to the law enforcement center. Are you want to make that one? Basically, center? it'll be one. It'll it'll be consistent from basically the interstate past the driveway to the law enforcement center. At it will be 55 miles an hour. That's yeah. Right now it's as long seven. As we're right. not jumping around. Right. 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 Is there a? I guess an enforcement. Um, method that y'all are going to start this off? In other words, it's not going to be tomorrow, right? And then y'all are going to start surprising people. Oh. Uh, tickets, right? You know, I, you can educate. What, what are, what, what are y'all going to do to educate the community? I am not familiar with that. I don't know. Well, because everybody's it, used to be, that right now, right? This, this is an ordinance, it, and it, this is the first reading of the ordinance. It will take another reading of the ordinance, and then it takes 30 days to go into effect from that point. Um, so basically, the, the public will have two months to adjust. We will be out there. We will put the new signs out 30 days after. Text dot. Text it's text dot roadway. Right. Yeah. It's, it's text dot. We can certainly put out public information to our citizens through our website. Where does the city limit begin? Where, where does the city limit start on that? How far out? Three and five. How far out? Three and five. It, is it before you get to the law enforcement center? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. The, the city limits goes, straddles 385 south of where Crane Road comes in. So it's quite a oh, bit okay. south of there. Yep. 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 Right. What are yep. the uh, statistics? Car accidents, uh, traffic tickets? I, I don't Do have, have that, that information. information. No, sir. No, sir. So why is it that they want to reduce? Uh, TxDOT did a speed study, and so they evaluated it and considered lowering the speed limit. For what purpose? Um, I mean, normally they do it because of fatalities or you know some, but, some particular. And it's probably accidents and speeds. That's probably the two factors that they look at. Can you get that information for us? Sure. Do we know if the county requested a change? I'm sorry? Do we know if the county requested a change in speed limit in front of the court or the jail? I don't know where the origination of the request came from. If it was just text dot, I don't know. We can provide that information for you. I don't have a problem with it being lower. I don't have a problem with it being 55. I mean, until you get past there, I just, I just don't want to see it jumping around. I mean, everybody needs to know where it's, where it's at. And yeah. And I, know it'll it'll be, I know it'll be safer. Uh, that's, a, that's not a... A great area to be traveling in anyway. Is this the only section affected? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. I would imagine it's primarily because I would think getting in and out of the jail facility with 70 mile an hour traffic and traffic has increased on that road, I would think it would be very dangerous. Um, they're not typically going 70, they're going 75 or. Yeah, or 80. Yeah. Or up. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Okay. Motion second. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Next, uh, consider amending of sections 1 7 7, Citizens Golf Advisory Committee. Ms. Grimaldo. <coughs> this committee consists of five members appointed by the mayor. The uh, change would add two ex officio members to the committee appointed by the mayor. Could you explain why we're doing the ex officio members? There is representation from Odessa College and uh, the UTPB golf coach that would like to.
be a part of the board, so they're going to be in place of the ex officio and allow another member to serve on the board. Then that would allow one more spot for a, a citizen. A citizen. Okay. So it'll be five citizens and the two coaches. Steve, how, how, is that okay with you? Sure. Yeah, okay. We have Coach RLC is on there now. Coach Thomas is on now. But with the addition of UTPB having a golf program, they're going to need representation on there. So that's why I've asked this. Okay. And, and I was wondering, the people that are on the board, is there anything <coughs> that they're quali to be qualified to be on that board that they need to play golf out at, at Redlift Ranch? Or does that have anything to do with it? The so ones I've interviewed are very passionate about Radliff, and that's why I put them on there. Many of them play weekly, if not even more. These are these are your appointees. These are my appointees. Okay. So, okay. any other questions? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion second. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Calder. Uh, number seven, consider amending Article 6-8 of the City of Odessa Code of Ordinances. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the council is aware, uh, we did a PowerPoint presentation at the last briefing, and I've just asked Vanessa to cover the major components of it. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this item, the amendments on this item would align our ordinance with the Texas Department of Health Standards for Swimming Pools and Spas. Um, they include the uh, required chemical levels for pools, as well as the testing fr frequency, and that a, a, the requirement that a phone and other electronic means be capable of immediately summoning emergency services within 200 feet of pools. <coughs> Additionally, we added provisions that would outline the permitting process and would specify grounds for revocation, suspension, and denial of the permit. Um, these amendments in this ordinance does apply only to public and semi-public swimming pools. We worked with the Extra County Health Department in finalizing the amendments, and we do have them present here for any questions. And this is just cleaning up from the state side? Correct. Okay. This, this only affects, uh, like, the city pools. It would affect pools at the hotels. And at, at apartment complexes, yes. And apartment houses, okay. But not at individual homes? Correct. Okay. Any more questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So many. Have a second. A motion, second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, under resolutions, uh, consider economic development agreement. Uh, Mr. Burnett has asked to speak real quick. I just want to, I know y'all are tabling this tonight. I just want to make sure y'all y'all know ODC has approved an incentive package on that, and y'all met with the company at finance last week. So as soon as we get the wording <coughs> and everything worked out, it'll be back for your consideration. There was a couple of questions that Barbara and I think Mr. Hamilton had asked okay. for some information that you might want to get with them. Okay. I didn't know about that, but let me know what they are. Okay. We'll get them for You'll you. You'll be here after the meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have a motion to table. So moved. And motion. Second. And second. All in favor of tabling, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, consider a lease agreement with Odessa. Council for Arts and Humanities. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to mention before we start this that Austin Keith, who I can see over there um, trying to hide, but was absolutely instrumental in this, and his contact with the owner of the property and the owner of the sign is really what allowed this to occur. Great. Thank you, Keith. Good Others. evening, Mayor, City Council. My name is Natasha Brooks and I'm a senior assistant city attorney in the city attorney's office. Um, this item is for a long-term lease agreement between the city of, of Odessa and Odessa Council for the Arts and Humanities for the use of a sign for a public arts piece. As you'll remember, the city received a gift deed conveying this property in January um, 2017 and the city has also um, received a general access easement in order to enter the property. Okay, are there any questions? Mr. Keith, thank you very much for all your help with this. Um, thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second, any more discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, consider the approval of donation of retired vehicles to UTBB police. Mr. Phillip. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor. The city has received a request for the donation of two retired fleet vehicles from the UTP UTPB Police Department. These vehicles will serve in first response and investigative duties for this department. They will also assist city departments if needed. Staff recommends that these vehicles be declared sur surplus property and donated to UTPB. One is a 2011 Ford Crown Vic and it is a marked unit with 71,000 miles. The other is a 2011 Ford Crown Vic with 95,000 miles. The estimated value of these vehicles is $8,700. Staff does recommend this uh, this donation, and I have members of the uh, UTPB Police Department. I don't know if you have anything you would like to add here. No, just with limited budget, it just would benefit our department greatly to have these vehicles. Well, let me ask you about the radios. Do you all have radios to put in it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, all of the electronic equipment, as far, as far as the radios, have been removed for the city purposes and then we'll provide that equipment to go in the vehicles. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Have a second. Yeah. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? You've got two ground Vicks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all very much for all you do. Next under uh, miscellaneous appointment boards, uh, A, we are waiting for uh, legal to finish that up. Uh, B. Uh, we do need to go ahead and approve those, the changes to the golf committee. Um, Mr. Bryant does not have anybody for ODC. Building Board of Appeals, have we had any applicants? No, sir. Okay. And CRMWD, we're holding that um, for an update. So I need uh, approval for the Citizens Golf Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. second. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, this is the end of the agenda, so do we have a motion to uh, so move? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.